This has been a really hard summer. There were so many times where as everything was going wrong, I was really worried that I would have to like watch the movies alone and I was never alone. I love The Lord of the Rings. I remember watching it when I was 12 years old with my dad on his computer because he said it was too scary to watch on the TV where my younger sister might see it. I remember my dad bribing me to read The Protector of the Small books in order to see Return of the King in theaters. I remember watching it with best friends, watching it with my sister when we were both in high school and watching it uh, during COVID to get through lockdown. I even wore Arwen's Evenstar necklace to my prom and my wedding. On the top Topic of weddings, I did quote Samwise Gamgee in my wedding vows. And what's amazing is I don't think I'm alone in feeling this way about these amazing movies. So it's been a while since my aforementioned 2020 COVID rewatch, and I think it's high time to marathon the entire extended edition again, but this time I want to make it a bit more special and celebrate my love for these movies with some amazing food. What about your Luncheons, afternoon tea, dinner, supper. Now, we all know these seven Hobbit meals that Pippin mentions in Fellowship of the Ring. Now, I will say that in the original book, Tolkien did sort of mush dinner and supper together, like they were sort of one entry, but Pippin lists them separately as meals that he's worried about missing out on while traveling with Aragorn, so I'm going to include both of them. And yes, for my little watch and feast, I am going to include each of these meals throughout the watch time and also snacks and other scenes that just get sprinkled between because they seem thematically consistent. I'm really excited. I hope you are too. So let's just get into it. A simple life. Let's start with the first Hobbit meal, breakfast. Now, something to keep in mind with this project is that I wanted to be watching these movies while they were playing. I didn't want to be like in the kitchen preparing food. I wanted to be eating the food. So I very strategically prepped this menu such that all of the food could be uh, made, prepared ahead of time, and then either cooked in the oven and served or just served as is. But that was true for everything except breakfast because I thought it would be fun to serve a full English breakfast. What are you doing? Good morning. I went to bed after midnight and then in classic me form, I uh, I woke myself up at like five something, just feeling really excited about the party coming up. You know, operating on subpar sleep, but it's okay, it's gonna be great. I will get all the various things that I need for breakfast to be ready. And uh, yeah, got like half an hour before people arrive. So that should be plenty of time. It was not enough time, but that's okay because everything still turned out delicious. Next up is one of those special scenes with paired food that I was talking about. As we all know, Peter Jackson, the director of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, does have a cameo in Fellowship of the Rings in the town of Bree, where he is eating a large carrot. So of course I had to serve a carrot charcuterie plate and baked brie. What about breakfast? We've had one, yes. What about second breakfast? Next up, we're going to be making honeycomb, which um, doesn't actually have any honey in it. So that's annoying, but I'm sure it will still taste good with the apples and honey. I'll be pairing it with for second breakfast. Cause you know, Aragorn throws that apple and Pippin catches it or Mary catches it for second breakfast, the second breakfast scene. Now we're just waiting for 300 degrees, which given the wide surface area, I think is probably coming sooner rather than later. 
I guess let's just see where we're starting, yeah? 222, so we still got a ways to go. Okay, 300 degrees, remove from heat. It's supposed to foam up, why didn't it foam up? Oh, there we go, now it's foaming up, woo! Apparently we let this cool for an hour and then maybe I'll try a little bit of it. So it's been about an hour and we have the honeycomb. I believe you're supposed, oh, this is sticky. Maybe I should have used parchment paper. Um, but I believe uh, something out the baking soda is supposed to mean that like if I hit it in the center, it's just gonna like shatter. So uh, let's, let's try that, yeah? Well, that didn't work. I mean, that, that kind of worked. Oh, that's very tasty. Come on. Oh no. Tin foil is not the way. It does kind of like honeycomb underneath everything. This definitely isn't something you get to control. I am going to clean up all the mess that I just made, detinfoiling the honeycomb, and uh, I'm gonna eat the chunks of honeycomb that I couldn't get the tin foil off of. The local honey really made this dish. It was deep and sweet, and it worked so well with the honeycomb crunch. Ah, oh, it was great. Next up was 11Zs, and this is where the chaos really started. So 11Zs, 11Zs, as the name suggests, are served at 11. By my calculations, which was hard to make because there are no timestamps for either the extended editions or the theatrical releases of these movies available online. There's just scene duration. So I had to add all the scenes together to figure out when, based on start time of the movie, different scenes would be. But by my calculations, 11Zs will be when the group is in Lothlorien, which is where they get the lem this bread. So anyway, for 11Zs, I'm going to do a more fun version of Lembus bread, browned butter Rice Krispie treats. And I'm gonna be doing that twice, one with vegan and one with normal butter. So let's do that. Here we are at the stove for making a sort of fancy browned butter Rice Krispie treat. We're following an Alton Brown recipe. So first up, we're going to toast the Rice Krispies. And uh, I have them in a bowl because I bought the family pack, which was too much for this recipe, but it was more price efficient. 18 ounces is a lot of Rice Krispies, okay? I don't seem to have a big enough pan for this. How did I do this last time? Well, I guess we're only browning. Well, we can do this in batches. Oh, we have just started and it's already chaos. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more just like this. I understand why Alton Brown wanted me to use a wok for this. I don't think we have a wok. Okay, I can just smell it getting toasty now. Oh dear. Okay, okay. Off, 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 off. Get out, get out. Evacuate the pan. Shoot. Well, that isn't what we wanted. I'm gonna ignore all the Rice Krispies on the floor. I'm gonna clean out the pan and then we'll do the butter. So this brand of plant butter says it browns like normal butter. So we're gonna put that to the test um, right, right now. You know what? After toasting the Rice Krispies, I'm just feeling a little um, risk adverse right now. So we're just, we're just gonna that's just, let's, let's wait. I promise when the cameras aren't rolling, I'm like good at cooking, okay? So I know earlier I said that this would be a vegan Rice Krispie Treat recipe. I guess a more accurate description would be a non-dairy Rice Krispie Treat recipe because my friends are allergic to eggs and milk and that's the main reason that they're vegan and they don't eat meat. They're basically non-dairy, non-egg vegetarians. So uh, I did ask, they're fine with gelatin, so I am just gonna be using normal marshmallows. I don't even know if there's a vegan substitute for marshmallows that would work like this.
And I forgot salt because of course I did. Wait, was this salted butter or unsalt? Oh, who cares? Now time for the other half. I hope this goes just as well. This one came out better, I think. Oh my God. I don't know if anything has ever gone quite as bad as that just did. I didn't realize that when I stopped working out like two months ago, I wouldn't even be able to like stir a very thick mixture or lift a heavy pan. At least it tastes good. It's actually pretty reminiscent of um, my popcorn flavored marshmallows. My best guess is that the vegan butter uses something similar to the butter flavoring that I used for those marshmallows, which, you know, isn't bad, it's pretty good. And I will say it tastes pretty indistinguishable from normal Rice Krispies. So I'm wondering if I should even embarrass myself further by making a non-vegan version. Either way, I have to like clean now. And we're back. This time we're doing the browned butter, not browned butter substitute Rice Krispie Treats. And I am going to do them in two halves. I'm also not going to try toasting the Rice Krispies this time. I think that looks pretty brown, like compared to what it used to look like, right? I know this was supposed to be only a half batch, but um, I don't think any more is gonna fit in here. So we're just, we're, we're calling that. I'm just gonna have twice as much vegan Rice Krispie treats. Good morning, first of all. I know my hair looks a little goofy. I can't fix it. Second of all, we have the dishwasher dishwashing because this cooking marathon is not for the faint of heart. There is so much going on here. I'm just constantly cycling through dishes. Third of all, we have a cooking marathon today. So let's start with making Cafe de Oya. This is a Mexican coffee drink that I have had when I visit my sister in Arizona. And it is so good that I am making it for 11 Z's, which uh, means it'll be paired with the Rice Krispie treats. I think that's a pretty fun pairing, but let's make it. Editing Shayna here. You just saw me grab this. Now for context, I don't drink a lot of coffee, but I do keep it in my house because most of my family drinks coffee. And when they come to visit, I wanna make sure they have stuff to drink. And this was just in my little coffee drawer thing. And I thought, oh, perfect, it's pre-ground. I can just like pop it in. I don't have to like dirty my coffee grinder. The thing is, this looks like a thing of ground coffee, right? But if you um read the fine print, you will see it's actually roasted dandelion and uh, it's caffeine free. And the best part is that we did not realize this until we were in the middle of eating 11 Z. So just keep all of that in mind as I'm cooking this and talking about it, cause it's just funny. How is it possible that I can screw up making coffee? Like slightly fancy coffee, but still, it just, I'm a capable adult, I promise, I can do this. I, I don't know why everything's going wrong. Anyway, here's the uh, little bit that came through the filter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it. Oh, that's really good. I'm not a big coffee drinker because uh, the caffeine from coffee gives me anxiety. Oh my God, it's really good. I'm sure it would be even better if I was able to get like the Mexican cinnamon and the specialty sugar that 
the recipe calls for, but this is like the most Americanized version of Cafe de Oya, and I'm okay with that. So my calculations were off, and we did end up enjoying Elevensies in the Mines of Moria and not Lothlorien, but I maintain that if we had started on time, we would have been eating in Lothlorien and everything would have been great. Everything was great. Anyway, actually, the food was very tasty. I guess I'm gonna get started on making some vegan bread rolls, which you might think I would be feeling positive about because I make a lot of bread on this channel, but that never really goes right anyway. And then on top of that, this project seems to be cursed. So, oh, my hand is trembling. Is that just the coffee? Is that the coffee caffeine? Okay, well, let's put you in a tripod. Yeah, let's, let's, let's make some bread. I'm gonna deviate from the recipe here a little bit. It wants me to just go straight into adding more flour, but because my yeast is from the fridge and it's not rapid rise like the recipe calls for, I'm just, I'm just gonna let this rest for 10 minutes. Okay, it's been a while since we've talked. Uh, let me fill you in on what's happened. I prepped all the stuff that is going to go into the slow cooker potato stew that I'm gonna start cooking tomorrow morning before everyone arrives. It's gonna go in the slow cooker and, and I won't have to think about it until it's lunchtime. So yeah, potato stew is going to be luncheon, as I think the hobbits call it. The break between movies was absolutely perfect for us to enjoy lunch and despite my misgivings, the bread actually turned out amazing. So for our next special scene, I was supposed to do a lot of prep that I would have filmed. I was going to make a nice like salami charcuterie plate, but I ran out of time. So I'm just going to recreate for you what my guests experienced. Today has been so fun so far. I went to the Renaissance Fair, which it was my first ever Renaissance Fair. Everyone was dressed up. It was incredible. Honestly, it just seemed so thematically appropriate for this video that I thought I would mention it and like show you some fun footage because it was so cool. I can't wait to go back next year and hopefully like actually have a costume or something. Anyway. Today we are indeed going to be making scones. These are for the Hobbit meal afternoon tea. I did recipe test these scones already, so I know that they can come out really, really good. And I also know that it seems like vegan butter doesn't seem to melt, so it actually seems like a lot easier to get the right texture that you want. I'm just a little nervous because the Rice Krispies and the honeycomb didn't exactly go smoothly, but I have tested. I have tested this and everyone really liked it. These are going to be rosemary lemon scones because the current plan, if I looked at the sort of, again, the timing of scene durations, it looks like probably afternoon tea is going to hit right about at the end drought and drought and drought scene, which is, you know, in Fangborn Forest, it's the woods. So I'm going to be doing like a floral tea and I wanted something kind of woodsy. And I've seen like rosemary orange cake, but never like a rosemary citrus scone. And it turned out so good. It was so unexpected and oh, it just absolutely delicious. I will include the recipe below so you can try it with normal butter if you want to. <laughs>
I should have let this cool a lot longer, I think. Like, I'm sure it'll still, you know, taste fine, be sweet. I'm sure enough of it is gonna, like, stay on and soak on and taste like lemon, but clearly should have waited longer. This is what my impatience gets me. Okay, well, time to clean this. I think that just goes to show that no matter how many times you've done something, like pour glaze over a baked good, you can still screw it up, like by not letting the baked good cool completely. It's okay, it made a little bit of a mess, but a lot of the glaze is still holding. It's gonna taste really good. And Shayna from the past was right. The scones turned out super moist and delicious and were the things that everyone just kept going back for seconds and thirds of. Potatoes. We need one pound of sweet potatoes for the sweet potato pie, which of course is going to be for the scene, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Okay, that's a pound. With the end of Two Towers, it was time for another Hobbit meal. Dinner. Coming up, what I'm gonna be working on is the turkey mini meatloaves and the mini chickpea vegan meatless loaves. I needed a lot of veg for that. I'm going to be sauteing a lot of the vegetables on the stove and then everything is going to go into the fridge in little muffin tins and that's how I'm going to make like mini individual serving size meatloaves. I recipe tested this, it was so good. <laughs> Genuinely amazing. I should also make sure that I prep the sauce that's gonna go on both the meatloaves. But yeah, I think, I think we're doing pretty well. These are onions for two batches of meatloaf, one with meat and one uh, vegan, meatless loaves. These are breadcrumbs which I made earlier. Thank you. 
In the extended edition of Return of the King, Legolas and Gimli have a drinking contest, and so I'm going to make a nice cocktail for us to drink with them. And since I guess most sources agree it was probably honey wine or mead that they were drinking, I'm going to be making a mead-based cocktail that's sort of a twist on what I learned was a French 75, which includes creme de cassis, but which I, I can't find evidence of because no recipes for a French 75 seem to include creme de cassis. So I guess I hallucinated that. Anyway, let's uh, let's make some drinks. This is gonna be not entirely full on purpose. <laughs> you said don't worry about spillage. Yeah, I meant it. <laughs> This is stirring. Yeah, it is. So, it's a drinking. Cheers! A slight tingle in my fingers. I think it's effective. Okay, final haul. We're making supper. For supper, we're making hand pies because hand pies could have meat filling, but instead, uh, it's gonna be Nutella in half and um, blue blackberry, blackberry jam in half. And I'm basically making nothing from scratch. Not even basically. For this, I'm making nothing from scratch. I have store-bought puff pastry and store-bought Nutella and store-bought jam. I was going to make Nutella from scratch, but I couldn't find hazelnuts anywhere. And I checked like four different stores, so store-bought. So I don't think I've ever screwed anything up quite that much. Like I overfilled each of the little puff pastry squares so all the filling was coming out. I forgot that I need to wet the edges to create a seal. So everything's probably just going to explode open tomorrow when I try to bake them. I don't really think I care though, because it's really late and I still have to clean. So the hand pies did burst in the oven, but honestly, the Nutella was delicious, the jam was delicious, the pastry was good, it was all still there. It was great, and who cares that it was a little bit messy. And then finally, for the last emotional scene, the last uh, delicious bite, when Sam says, do you remember the taste of strawberries and cream? And so I have a pint of strawberries and I'm gonna whip some whipping cream with vanilla and sugar. So let's do that, okay? <laughs> So these are my final thoughts, and if you'll allow me, I'm going to get a little bit emotional. So I've been working on this project for several months. I first formulated the plan uh, at the very beginning of summer, like in May, and this has been a really hard summer. And so it kept getting pushed and getting pushed, and then we reached the time where if I didn't do it, then I wouldn't be able to do it until next year because a friend of mine was going to be moving for a few months. So. At the beginning of August, my grandfather passed away, uh, which was really hard. And and I, uh, I had to go out of town for his funeral. And when I got back, there was basically only one day that was going to work for this party because of the complications, because because of all, all the things that had happened. Um, it was pretty last minute that I was inviting anyone. And I was putting in a lot of effort. Like, obviously, I put in a ton of effort into this project and there were so many times where as everything was going wrong as the rice krispie treat was burning and the tin foil was sticking and the bread wasn't rising i really wondered if any of it was going to be worth it because i was worried that like i don't know come lunchtime no one was going to be here or you know uh, at the drinking competition that you know everyone would have gone home by that point and so i was really worried that i would have to like watch the movies and like reveal the food alone for some of it not all of it, I was pretty sure not all of it, but for some of it, I, I was genuinely worried. And I was never alone. I don't really think my friends like planned it like this, but um, I, I had people with me. <laughs> for every dish, for every movie, for every scene, I was never alone. And um, it was kind of supposed to be my makeup birthday party and 
I just really felt celebrated. Like everyone loved the food. Everyone loved the thought behind it. I had a couple Lord of the Rings like experts in and out of the party. So I found out some stuff about the Lord of the Rings that I actually hadn't known before. So that was really cool. I just, I felt really loved and cherished from doing this. And my cooking was so appreciated and the thought and the fact that Everything was vegan for those, you know, who couldn't, again, have dairy or egg. And this might be the coolest thing that I've ever done. And I'm really happy that I did it. That being said, um, I don't know if I would do it again, or at least not in this much detail, but I think I would do a food-based party again. I just wouldn't do the scene reveals. I would just have like a buffet ahead of time. I think that's probably the right way to do it. I really appreciate all my friends for coming. I appreciate you for watching and I should do a proper outro. Okay. If you liked this video and want to see more cooking videos, I recently revived my sourdough starter. It had gone dormant and I brought it back from the dead. So you can watch that here. And if you like more high concept kind of videos, I will include one of my playlists of my crochet projects where I crocheted a QR code and put it on the back of a cardigan. That was incredible. And also my Mario Kart themed cardigan, the Mario Kart again. Thank you so much for watching. It means so much to me and I hope to see you again real soon. Cheers.